Good morning, everybody. My name is Aman Karana. I'm one of the assistant professors of radiology and biomedical engineering at University of Kentucky. I'm also one of the assistant editors of the GI subsection at the Arsenic Case Collection. As you can see on this background image, we're going to talk about contrast enhanced ultrasound. Here you have a liver lesion, which is barely visible on the grayscale imaging. But once we give microbubbles, you can see an avidly enhancing liver lesion. So the outline of this talk is, why do we need this imaging modality? What's the principle of this imaging technique? What are the different contrast enhanced contrast agents available? And specifically talking about liver lesions today with indications, comparing them with CT and MR imaging, the analysis algorithm I use and is published in the literature by uh, some of our colleagues um, and some case examples, both from the literature and from um, our university. So why, we, why do we need this imaging modality? I mean, the most important indication for contrast enhanced ultrasound uh, microbubbles is that it's safe for patients with impaired renal function. It's safe for patients with allergy to both CT and MR contrast agents. Um, we can also use in claustrophobic patients who cannot get into a CT or MRI machine. Um, but most important is the real-time evaluation of the lesions, right? So once you do a CT and MRI, you could miss the arterial phase, you could miss the portal venous phase, but in contrast and enhanced ultrasound, you are imaging um, as many, as frequent as you want, and you are going to get your arterial phase, portal venous phase, and delayed phase. So it does remove that circuitry variation as a factor in inability to achieve optimal imaging. It is a true vascular contrast agent, so it's helpful when CT and MRI call a lesion indeterminate, and also it's more economical, especially in developing countries. The principle of this technique is that the, these agents are microbubble-based contrast agents. They're the same size as the red blood cells, so they can pass through capillary beds, uh, but they stay in the circulation without diffusing into the interstitium. You do need to use a low mechanical index imaging to prevent that bubble burst. So the MI or the mechanical index needs to be less than 0.1 or uh, 0.3. Uh, you do use a pulse inversion sequence and a contrast specific subtraction technique. So your software of your ultrasound machine needs to be upgraded to have these two sequence and subtraction techniques to be able to image these microbubbles. In brief, this pulse inversion sequence, you send two opposite incident pulses where the background's canceled. And I'll show you imaging examples why uh, it looks dark on the background until the microbubbles come. So then the microbubbles, when they arrive in the liver after you inject, that has a nonlinear response. So they don't cancel. That's why there's called the bubble only image. So in that cover image on my first slide, the left image was a bubble only image. The right image was a grayscale image to kind of know approximately if you are in that vicinity of the region of the lesion. So the two contrast agents here mentioned are Definity and Lumison. Uh, Definity has been uh, FD approved for suboptimal echocardiograms in the United States. And Lumison has been approved for liver imaging in 2016, uh, since 2016 in the United States. For Definity, you do use a very small dose, about 0.2 ml. And then you flush that with a 5 ml saline flush. Same thing uh, for Lumison, just use a little bit bigger dose, a little bit larger dose. So you use 1.8 to 2.4 ml of IV bolus, and then you flush with that 5 or 10 ml saline flush. Um, a slow uh, injection rate for Definity because <clears throat> it's a low volume. Um, for Lumison, about 2 to 3 ml per second. Again, not too fast. You don't want to rupture those microbubbles. Definity needs refrigeration. Uh, Lumison does not. Uh, most of you guys out there um, have heard about this. Uh, some of you guys have already done uh, these uh, contrast and ultrasound or your university, somebody does that, your practice, somebody does that. Uh, usually Lumison comes in a form of powder. You mix it with saline, you shake it up and uh, you are ready to inject. So it is, there is no refrigeration needed, which is quite convenient. So now moving to specifically liver contrast and enhanced ultrasound, what are the indications for hepatic contrast and enhanced ultrasound? So first and foremost is assessment of benign versus malignant lesions in patients who cannot get contrast, right? This is the easy one. 
Uh, patient cannot get contrast. We have to use contrast and then ultrasound. Um, so what can we characterize or what can we differentiate? We can actually uh, figure out different subtypes of benign lesions. So I think the first and foremost, I should say, we can figure out benign versus malignant lesions, but then we can also characterize benign and malignant lesions. So for benign, we can characterize a hemangioma, we can characterize a focal nodular hyperplasia or an adenoma. It's a hard diagnosis, but you can. Um, for malignant lesions, we could differentiate between HCC and cholangio slash metastasis pattern. Uh, I put a slash here because it's very hard to differentiate these two, cholangio from metastases, um, but definitely you can differentiate HCC from, from this kind of LRM pattern, what we call in our CT and MR world. So we'll talk about that. Um, we do use it for incompletely characterized lesions. As I said, when CT and MR calls it indeterminate uh, because you have this added benefit, vivascular contrast, uh, we can also assess an ablation cavity viability uh, when CTMR is equivocal. So if CTMR cannot figure out if this is real enhancement or not, we can do CEUS and then true vascular enhancement will declare itself. Um, it is not indicated. I want to emphasize on this. It is not indicated for routine screening. So you, if you can, patient cannot get uh, CT or MR contrast and there is no tumor, you're not going to give contrast and answer some and go search for tumors. We don't do that. It is problem solving for a specific lesion. So I, I recommend to my uh, colleagues, my hepatology colleagues, to get an MRI non-contrast, which might be better uh, in patients who have high FP. Uh, who cannot get IV contrast. And if we find something, then we can target our ultrasound over there. So quick comparisons. This is from uh, this radiographics paper um, where they quickly show what contrast enhanced ultrasound microbubbles versus CT and MR contrast does. So the top uh, panels or top panels are contrast enhanced microbubbles, which kind of stay within the vascular compartment so it's a real-time imaging technique which demonstrates enhancement regardless of the timing or duration of enhancement. It's entirely intravascular versus the bottom panel here, the CTMR contrast agents were initially in the vessels, but then eventually they're diffused into the interstitium. That's why you see lesions wash out more on contrast and it's also than CT and MRI because when contrast goes in these lesions in CUS, they're bright and then it moves away then they're washing out. Versus CTMR, the contrast goes in, but they made, it may diffuse into the interstitial. So you may see some persistent enhancement. Um, so I think this is probably one of the more important concepts to understand. This is from a radiographic paper in 2017 uh, from Burroughs, um, who was one of my co-fellows, uh, slightly overlapping fellow back in my fellowship. Um, I really like this algorithm because um, it really talks about you know, how to start with benign versus malignant and then how to subcharacterize them. So I would recommend everybody to go read this paper. Uh, I will talk about uh, the imaging enhancement patterns in this talk as well. So if you do, do not have any, so first question, is this portal venous or late phase washout, right? This is the working algorithm we use. If there is no washout, then it's most likely a benign lesion. If there is washout, it's a malignant lesion. So going to this left panel here, if there is no portal venous phase or late washout, you call it a benign lesion, but then you try to figure out in the arterial early, late arterial portal venous and late phase, how is the enhancement pattern? Everybody knows peripheral nodular discontinuous enhancement pattern on CT and MRI is a hemangioma pattern. So here, if you see that same pattern, you can call this a hemangioma benign lesion. And if you notice here, all late phases here, um, except for this adenoma, which I'll talk about, will show sustained enhancement. And that's why this is the benign category. So your hemangiomas could be complete, incomplete, fill, or flash fill. Um, when you have this centrifugal enhancement pattern, so from the center kind of outwards, it's more suggestive of an FNH. A, you will see sustained enhancement. You may see a central scar, which is not fully enhancing um, for FNH. Uh, when you see a centripetal enhancement, so from kind of out to in, that's more suggestive of an adenoma. Adenomas usually show sustained enhancement, but up 30% of them could show weak washout. And that's why it becomes a little bit hard to differentiating that from an HCC, uh, but other um, characteristics may help you. 
So on the right panel here, if you have washout in the porovenous or late phase, then it's a malignant lesion. And then you differentiate between HCC versus non-hepatocellular. That's what I was telling you. LRM pattern on CT and MRI is cholangiometastasis lymphoma. They will show you either diffuse enhancement, rim, or hypo enhancement, but then there'll be a very fast washout. They'll already start to wash out within the first minute or so. And this paper talks about it really well. Um, versus HCC, you can also see hyper enhancement or dysmorphic vessels. So maybe not as enhancing as the uh, non hepatocellular malignancy pattern, uh, but will show a very weak and slow washout. So here you can see still enhancing in the late arterial, maybe a little bit of wash on portovenous and then more wash on the late one. Here it washed out pretty nice and what we described as a punched out lesion pretty early. So let me show you some case examples. This is from the paper where they talk about a malignant lesion uh, showing enhancement at 12 seconds and then showing a washout really quickly at 34 seconds. So this washout tells me it's malignant lesion and this early washout and a punched out washout tells me this is a non-hepatocellular malignancy uh, pattern. Again, benign lesion at 10 seconds, really avid enhancement, uh, homogenous enhancement. And at four minutes, it's still enhancing. There's sustained enhancement, right? So that's benign. This is um, then differentiating that arterial enhancement and a 40 or a 30 second washout. Uh, punched out. So that would be the non-HCC malignancy. Again, enhancement uh, pretty avidly at arterial phase, but then at three minutes, there's a weak washout. So if you look at these two, this is 40 seconds, this is three minutes. So punched out, fast washout, weak washout, late washout is more HCC pattern. These are case examples here from, uh, from our university at UK. Um, we see an arterial phase uh, enhancement, kind of rim enhancement. And then at 45 seconds, you already see washout. This is a grayscale image to kind of tell you where the lesion is. So this favors a non-HCC malignancy. Uh, down here, you can see a pretty big lesion with, again, heterogeneous, but hyper enhancement and arterial phase. And at three minutes, you can see that weak washout I was telling you about. It's, it's a slow three minutes. So this is at three minutes. This is at 45 seconds. Uh, and then the corresponding grayscale image. So this bottom panel, points more towards an HCC malignancy. Here's a video from the literature showing a diffuse arterial enhancement in real time uh, of an HCC. So this is within the first 15 seconds really. And then I have a corresponding video from our university uh, showing a similar imaging pattern. These microbubbles are arriving. You can see them in the vessels. Here's your lesion on the grayscale and then here avidly enhancing. I really like side by side. I think this is more is good for lit, uh, for publishing purposes because you can see the lesion. But when you're actually doing this uh, these cases, it's better to see a side by side uh, grayscale comparison because then you know, or your sonographer who's holding the probe knows that they're in the right uh, area. Uh, this one I want to show you a hemangioma pattern, so discontinuous nodular. So you can see this nodular is discontinuous from the literature. Uh, arterial enhancement pattern, um, suggestive of a hemangioma. Now, I'm not showing you a four-minute image, but at four minutes, this continues to enhance. And that's how I know it's a, that's how I can confirm that it's a benign lesion. Here, an example from, from our university. Lesion's very, very faint here. This was the cover image at the title slide. And here, after microbubbles, you can see very avidly discontinuous nodular enhancement on the arterial phase imaging, you can see the microbubbles all through the vessels. So this one, again, I'm not showing you the delayed phase, but it had sustained enhancement. You can also use these microbubbles for, as, a, as I told you earlier, for post-ablation viable tumor evaluation. So this is a case from, from, from our uh, university here. You can see some arterial enhancement kind of anteriorly and medial on MR. I think MR called it most likely viable or equivocal, uh, and we suggested our turn, uh, contrast enhanced ultrasound. Here is a video of arterial enhancement. So you'll see the cavity here um, on grayscale, and here you can see that thick rind, asymmetric rind of arterial enhancement here, and the kind of the medial aspect kind of matching this uh, CT MRI. So because of that arterial enhancement, um, we called it suspicious, but when we looked at four minutes contrast enhanced ultrasound image, you can actually see washout corresponding to that thick rind 
so if I can annotate here really quickly, just so that everybody gets what I was talking about, I'm talking about this rind, which are totally enhanced around a cavity, which is already dead. Uh, and then that rind to me looks mildly washing out over here. So uh, this is where we call it viable tumor. They went in and reablated it. So this is a good problem solving to tool even after your MR is done, but it's not fully helpful uh, because of you know, either uh, motion or something else where you cannot uh, call a uh, viable tumor or you have to call it equivocal, then you can do contrast and ultrasound. Another problem solving technique, uh, problem solving tool um, is when you have pseudo lesions. Uh, we all know there's these lesions which you know, could be fat deposition, but they look like they're arterially enhancing. I have a case here from UK uh, where there was arterial enhancement, but maybe more non-mass like arterial enhancement close to the gallbladder uh, here on the coronal, just superior to it. Uh, when we did the contrast enhanced ultrasound, this is not a cine, there was no lesion to be found. There was no arterial enhancement, no borders to this area. So it just looked like rest of the liver parenchyma. So we called it pseudo lesion on CT. It was background on CUS. So we really just named it pseudo lesion. We don't really need a biopsy. Now, obviously this doesn't fully uh, prevent you from a biopsy. So if the clinicians want to do biopsy, they can. Here's a cine of a regenerative nodule on CUS. So here you'll see I have a cine. Clearly there is a rounded lesion, which is um, hyper enhancing. It's kind of hard to see. On grayscale, you can definitely see a uh, more of a lesion here. Kind of can have hallucinate a little bit, uh, but because it did not wash out, we ended up calling it a benign lesion, but it was a cirrhotic liver. So I didn't want to call it a hemangioma and any of that. So we ended up calling it a re regenerative nodule because, because of the fact we could see the uh, lesion very well on the, on the grayscale imaging. So this is just all from all these two papers. I just wanted to put this all at summary slides so that you guys uh, understand what I was talking about. So if you can remember only a couple of things from this lecture, remember that microbubbles stay in the circulation versus CT contrast or MR contrast leaks into the interstitium. Um, you do lesional evaluation with CUS in the bottom left panel here. Uh, malignant lesions wa wash out, benign lesions continue to enhance. And then when you see a early contrast enhancement of a large liver lesion, and it is a homogenous pattern, uh, you know, it's most likely malignant, but uh, you do need to image all the way up to four, maybe even five or six minutes to make sure this won't wash out because HCC can homo homogeneously enhance, but then it'll wash out versus a flash film hemangioma um, or other benign lesions can also enhance, but they will, as shown in this algorithm, will show sustained enhancement. So uh, I would recommend people to go uh, uh, ahead and, and read these papers. Uh, hopefully the case examples and today's lecture was helpful. Uh, if you guys have any questions about contrast enhanced ultrasound, uh, please contact me at my email, which is uh, aman.k at uky.edu. I thank you. Thank you all for listening. I will see you soon.